Hey, what's going on guys? Tony here, CCXRC, and today on the build, we're gonna be looking at the transmission for the SMT10 bag E. We got through the dreaded D bag, which is the shocks, the worst part of the build, in my opinion. This doesn't look like it's gonna to be too bad. I've actually never built this from scratch, so it'll be interesting. I have a lot of these transmissions. I've taken them apart, I've switched them to metal gears. But I've never built it from scratch, so it'll be interesting pulling stuff out of bags and building it versus kind of taking it apart and putting it in places around my <laughs> table. So a little bit different, um, but we'll be getting to that. You've got a couple things you need to pull out of uh, plastic bag number two as well. You're going to be getting out AX8009, oh, 8009 which is going to have the plastic components as well as... Uh, it's in a baggie, so that makes it a little bit easier to find, but this is 80078, and these are going to be the outer pieces of this. And free-floating in there is your spur gear. Now, you can buy these completely assembled, fully metal cased as well, if you like, from Hot Racing. Um, this would save you a step in the process. These are really nice. This has um, been changed a little bit to an axial plate motor plate here and a smaller spur gear which after I build this and show it to you guys I may run this one because this has like a slipper delete on it and uh, being a smaller spur gear will give me higher speeds on 2s with the uh, this the limited pinion that'll fit with the uh, the motor movement marks here the the slots that you have to move your motor so that's all kind of going a little extra technical with it but um, it's something to think about and uh, I can run a smaller pinion and get more speed with a smaller spur gear. So this will probably go in, but I'm gonna show you how to build this anyway, just cause I'm a glutton for punishment. Let's look at the baggies here, guys. We got bearings, screws. Ah, oh, we do have a 1.5 in there. So I'm gonna need that wrench, motor mount plate, slipper stuff. That's what your slipper goes on to. Yeah, that'll all make sense when we get in there working on it. Trust me, be your main gear. Right, so here's, what I would do, it does come with um, the pinion. If you're not gonna do a smaller spur gear, like is um, on that hot racing that I have, if you're gonna do the 56 tooth, getting something like this hardened steel Robinson Racing 17 tooth, 32 pitch pinion is amazing. 16 tooth, 17 tooth, uh, it'll give you really good speed on um, the stock setup. This is what I run in all of my other ones, is either 16 or 17 tooth. Uh, and I run it on 3S brushless power. It's amazing. So if you're running the 52 tooth that's on this hot racing, you can run a smaller pinion and still be good to go um, at high speeds. Uh, or you can run bigger pinions on lower LiPo batteries. Lots of different options for speed from these cars, and that's what's making them so cool and hoppy grade. All right, so what we're going to be looking at, though, is we're going to the manual here. And, yeah... All kinds of stuff. Just like crunch it all together is what they're saying. Just like line all these things up and then it just use the force to squeeze them together, I think, is how that's assembled. But um, we're not going to do it that way because I don't have the force powers yet. And so I'm still still um, learning. A little Padawan here. So we're going to go ahead and just do it by hand slowly, the old-fashioned way. With starting with the top here, the main gear that I showed you already. So let's do that. All right, so what do we need? Screws out of the screw bag. Let's cut this open. Let's kind of move stuff out of the way, get the parts that we do need. We need those. We need these three tiny little screws. We need the big main gear. And we need the two bigger bearings right here, which means we're gonna need some utter butter. It's pretty obvious on these if you look at them. One has the bigger reamed out holes there. That's where the screw head sits. This side's gonna be threaded. So you're gonna to wanna to use a little blue Loctite. Cinch these together. On this big bad boy. It doesn't matter which way this goes. Just get her started. All right. So that was simple. We just put the three little screws in here. Holds it together. Now we're gonna uh, put a little bit of um, utter butter on the bearings and uh, Get them seated on here. There's a little bit of a tight bearing there, but we got her on. When we get it in the truck, we'll put a little bit more grease on there. I don't want to get too sloppy. All right, so now we got to just start doing all this junk. 
I'm not sure the best way to go about this. Probably what I'm gonna do is start by putting the bearings in to this side of the case, and then we'll start sliding things in to those bearings. Put a little bit of other butter on. And then we're gonna place that bearing in place. Now we need the AX3094. The slotted end of it is gonna stick out because when we put the rod through here, it's gonna be, you'll see, it makes sense. It's really not that bad. Lots of grease on here. Set it in place. Boom, like so. We're still good, haven't messed up. So looking at the directions, it's pretty obvious what our next step is gonna be. We're gonna put this pin through, and if you put some grease on that pin, it'll stay in place nicely. You'll be happy if you do that. And I just hold it just like that. Slide this through. Line up our pin with the gear and drive it in. That looks all right. All right, so we're going to take another bearing. Just get it covered in grease. Slide it inside of the remaining gear. Very simplistic transmissions. Now the bearing is going to go in like so. So it's open on this side. I put another bearing in the other. Could have done both bearings to start with. And then we're going to jam this huge rod in there. That looks wonderful. So one of the pieces I did miss, haha. But it's not too late, is that there's another bearing that's going to go on here. Just like that. Oh, wasn't, wasn't too late. We got lucky. Now we're going to slather this guy up. Get it to fit in there nicely. Some people say you can have never have too much grease. I disagree. That is what it looks like when it's done. And this is what it sounds like with ASMR. All right, so now we just gotta close this little capsule up. Before we consider ourselves done with that part, we do need to take this little cap off here. And that's gonna go right on the back side. Make sure you get your Axial logo nice looking on there. That looks pretty good. All right guys, so the next part, we're gonna have four screws. Three of them are long. And one of them, this guy, is shorter than the others. Anyway, that's important as we build this out here. You'll see um, we're going to the next st spot of assembling the uh, motor plate and all of that. So let's get to it. So the easiest thing for me to do is start with the shortest one, which is going to go on this lower side right here. I'm going to go into this little nut which I don't need to put any blue thread lock on because it does have a, a locking washer on it. Got our little wrench here, comes with the trucks. Gonna get it ready here on the nut and just tighten this down. That's the wrong way, it's loosening. All right, so we didn't mess it up. So we got this one already in, the screws in, we're gonna take this little plastic piece it's going to slide and the holes here have to line up with this guy. It's going to sit just like that, which is why we need the longer screws for this. Just kind of go ahead and push them through here from the back side. And then this plate's going to sit right on here. Now this is metal into metal, so we are going to add thread lock, but since these are already pushed through, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the thread lock into the holes here. Basically achieve the same, same thing. Just a little bit messier. First. And third. Look at that, you guys. You just built your transmission. Go ahead and give yourself a round of applause. Go ahead and wipe up the extra lock tight. Blue thread locker. Don't want that getting inside the transmission. All right. So we've got that now assembled. Should be feeling pretty good about yourself. And then the slipper gear. Oh yeah. All right, the first thing we're gonna do, 
take this little piece here and slide right on like so very simple you guys did it I know it you rocked that the magnet try not to get too much grease on these because then they'll just slip so I'm gonna hold it to the outsides but it is um, notched and so you just got to line those notches up good to go so here's where you're going to put the pads on pretty straightforward you can see the pattern so we're just going to take off this back here and it's going to stick on there you can do it I believe in you there it is go ahead and just do the second one because we're here perfect you'd think I built one of these before I haven't you guys are listening to me tell you how to do it there's a part in this again right here uh, that part before you start this whole thing when you find AX31027 here look at what also has that same number this little bushing guess where this is it's not on any part tree it's just free floating in bag two so just dig around in the bag there's no numbers written on the piece itself you just have to know that that which isn't referenced along the side at all to let you know that it's not actually a bearing it's not shown in your part descriptions it's just free floating in part bag two so it'd be nice if they at least put it over here so you could line it up and match it but it isn't so I'm helping you out here it's in part bag two go find it it's like where's Waldo that's gonna slide right in here maybe it'll already be just kind of in your spur gear maybe you'll be lucky the force will be working for you I don't have the force yet there it is drop the spring on there drop a nut on there probably could use this tool again so handy now what they want you to do is to go to eight millimeter gap between the bottom of the screw and this I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tighten it all the way down. Lock it up. That's pretty tight. Is we're going to count our rotations now. I'm going to go back, turn it one time there, which is actually half a turn, and then another half a turn. I'm going to do one more quarter, it looks like. That looks pretty good. They want you to do eight millimeters. We're at about seven. We're pretty close. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much done. Next thing we have to do is mount the motor and the pinion. I don't have that set up yet. All right, so here's the plan. Originally, I was going to go four steer with this vehicle. Have the, the servos for it. Make it a... Um, a fun basher but I realized that I've got a race motor here got a race transmission here like this is a higher KV this would be better for speed my other one and my um, sticker bomb 1.0 would probably be better for bashing and so I'll probably what I'll do is I'll make this a race truck and then I'll do the four steer for you guys on that other truck and show you how to do it on a different rig set up exactly the same but I think that's what we're gonna do but typically you're going to want your motor leads to kind of go up because usually your ESC is going to be mounted up above it. So I'm trying to think through that as I'm building here. We'll slide. I'm going to start with the 14 tooth pinion. So there it is. That's what we're looking at. I do have a 17 tooth I can put in, but we're going to, going to go this route for the time being and see what happens. So Axial does give you everything you need to mount this up in this baggie here and we'll get this thing installed and ready to be mounted to our plate and then we're going to start building around it. it's going to be, get exciting from here it's going to start looking like a monster truck very soon it's going to kind of hand tighten the, this screw in here so what we're going to do is take this little grub screw that they give us we'll come back and we'll tighten the motor down once we get her set wow I just dribbled a whole bunch of that Loctite uh thing to note when you do put these on if this is your first build first assembly of anything like this is that there's a notched part on the motor shaft and that is where your 
the screw is going to sit flat spot right there and that's where I want that pinion grub screw to line up and so then I'm going to just line up the teeth I don't have to get it the mesh set yet I just want to get the teeth to be hitting pretty much the whole spur gear and then I'm just going to tighten this down it's good I don't typically do it this way anymore I've done it enough that I just kind of eyeball it but what you can do is you can just take a sheet of paper and put it in between the gears and then kind of push it together and that should put enough gap in there when you tighten this down and pull it out um, that it should be a pretty decent mesh so I'll go ahead and do that there are little washers that they have for you to use with these right here these screws for the motor this motors get some movement so I'm gonna pull it out here just to see how it feels between them all right so the motor is mounted and tightened down here the next thing we're going to do is put this faceplate on it they say to do just covers it up keeps it clean running this one here it just kind of sit on like that and you just screw it together which I'm actually going to do and wrap it up with this piece here bag and mounting the motor or the, the transmission plate right on like so pretty easy to line up alrighty guys so that is a quick look at the transmission build for the SMT10 motor mount as well I might go in and, and make changes in mind where things sit um, based on where all the cords go but I'm okay with it being there because I have to do I do have to go up if it was sitting up top I'd be pulling backward on it so I, I kinda like this look for tracing upward as long as that fits inside with all the uh, cage and everything but um, pretty straightforward pretty simple and hopefully uh, you don't have any problems putting together and move on to the next part which is drive shafts and then starting to assemble parts of the uh, body or not the body but the chassis so thanks for tuning in as always guys have fun RCing we'll catch you next time we <laughs>